How about now? Can we hear me now? It doesn't really look like now. Oh, yes. Okay, great. <laughs> Wonderful. Um, okay, yeah, thank you all for joining. Um, people are here already. That's so exciting. Um, yeah, I, uh, uh, thank you for being here. I um, got stood up today. Not like stood up, stood up. Not like, I was going to hang out with a friend tonight, and she was sick. Um, and so I got... Um, I looked nice and I was like, I'm not going, I'm not going out anymore. You know, I don't have anything to do. So, um, I might as well do something that records it for posterity, <laughs> like streaming to the internet. So here we are. Um, so, um, if you're watching this, um, actually I'm just going to start, this is where I'm going to start the YouTube video. I'm starting the YouTube video right here. Hello everyone. Um, if you're watching this, um, uh, what you're about to see is you're going to see me. My name is Amber Autumn. I'm going to be ranking, tier listing every single weapon card in Arkham Horror, the card game, um, uh, up to the release of Hemlock Vale, which is all as of time of recording that currently exists. Um, there are 97 of them, um, which is an insane thing to do. Um, uh, I am doing this in part because I had plans tonight that got canceled, and so um, when I got dressed this morning, um, I got dressed and I looked nice, um, and uh, now I have to um, put that somewhere and I'm putting it on the internet. So if you're watching this, um, you have a, a moral obligation to tell me that I look pretty, because I look pretty. Thank you all. Um, okay, let's get going. Um, so, uh, broadly, this is going to be our... Um, our, our, our window that we're working in here. And there's a lot of cards to get through here, so I am going to go ahead and just um, get started, and I'll, I'll just read off any um, uh, anything that folks say in the chat so that YouTube can see it. Um, okay, so we are going to start with uh, Roland's 38 Special. Um, I'm not going to read the full text of every card. I'm going to assume that you can read the card yourself and or that you have like a passing familiarity with most of these weapons already because you're watching a tier list in Arkham and so you probably already have some familiar familiarity with the game and how it works. Um, I think that Roland's 38 Special has broadly improved over the course of the runtime of the game. When it was originally debuted, um, like it's it's three cost and a hand slot for four shots is like it's fine right it's it's okay um i think that it like has gotten better with the addition of extra ammunition cards um it still is not like an enormous improvement over the 45 automatic um but i do think that much like roland himself it works pretty well as like a baseline card that shows us like kind of like, it's an okay gun. It does more or less what it's supposed to do. It's, like, maybe slightly above the curve, but not substantially. Um, it's fine. And and that's, like, the function that Roland serves in this game is to be fine and to show us what being fine looks like. Um, uh, then we have uh, Roland 38 Special, the next gun in the, in the set. Um, so uh, this is an improvement by virtue of you get an additional combat on the test, um, and it can reload itself. Um, I haven't played with this card at all, I'm gonna be honest with you, um, because the, the upgraded weakness is just so gnarly on Roland that it doesn't seem to me worth it. Um, so, like, obviously, I can't compare every one of these cards on its, like, like literal decontextualized power level, right? I'm not just gonna say, oh, um, the upgraded Mystic Enchanted Blade is strictly better than the level zero Enchanted Blade, even though, like, on the text on the card, it's true, but it costs XP to buy into the Mystic Power, the Mystic Enchanted Blade, and so you're, you're having some level of opportunity cost for that. I mean, I'm, I am trying to factor the opportunity cost into my calculus of these cards. And so, um, I think that given that this card, like, necessarily comes with the advanced weakness, um, I actually think that I am going to rank this one. I mean, it's a, it is a, how is it as a gun though? Um, I, I don't even think I'm that impressed with it as a gun. Like getting to add additional ammo is nice. And like, like getting that support from other card pools is the thing that makes the 38 special still playable in its base form today. Um, but I think, um, uh, that... I think that given that it comes packaged with a worse version of your weakness, um, uh, it's just not worth it to me, and I am going to put it in D, weirdly. Um, 
Uh, so setting the standards here for what we're talking about. 45 automatic. This is this is speaking of setting the standard. This is like what what guardian weapons look like. Um uh you get four shots at plus 1 plus 1. I'm going to be referring to it in that format by the way. You you have a, a number of shots at um plus your combat value and plus the damage. So it gives plus 1 combat and deals plus 1 damage. This is a plus 1 plus 1 shot weapon. Um if you have like you know, the, 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 the knife is normally a plus one plus zero for its, for its baseline attack, for example. Um, this card, um, I'm going to put down in C. I think that it is a little bit below the curve at this point. Um, it's, it's expensive is the main problem with it. Like, four dollars is a lot in Guardian if your name isn't Zoe Samaris. Um, uh, they have a tough time with money in general. They have a lot of expensive things they want, and like four vicious blows is just not enough to justify four dollars in a card for me. Um, I really need a little bit more support, and honestly, like extra ammo doesn't even go that far on this one because plus one plus one is just not that good in the current card pool. Like, don't get me wrong, it is still like the metric upon which all other guns are measured. Um, it is the default, it is the baseline, and I, I do respect it for that, and I do often end up, like, putting it in, like, the rough draft version of a lot of my decks. It just doesn't often make it to, like, the final cut of a lot of the decks. Um, uh, the upgraded version, on the other hand, um, is not that much better. <laughs> it, it still has a lot of the same problems. Turning off Retaliate is relevant more often than... I would think, like, like first looking at it, I was like, I don't care about turning off Retaliate, but I do, as it turns out, care about turning off Retaliate. It does let you um, be a little bit braver, which is nice. It lets you, um, you know, react to dangerous situations. You get to just shoot at a scary monster and not worry as much if you fail, but you're still worrying a little bit if you fail because you still only have four bullets. Um, you're kind of just firing at a plus two, plus one, and now you've spent two ammo on it. Um, I don't like this upgrade. I'm putting it in D. Um, I'm sorry, 45 automatic. Nothing personnel, kid. Machete, on the other hand, um, obviously I can't put Machete in D. Machete was the, the, um, like, the weapon for years and years. It was tabooed up a couple of experience, and it's been slowly climbing its way back down the taboo list, and it's free now. It is no longer tabooed. You can just take Machete because uh, so many other weapons have compared to it. As long as you were engaged with exactly one enemy, it is an infinite plus one, plus one for three dollars in a hand slot, and often you find that you are. It's not a forever weapon. You know, you can occasionally take Machete to the end of a scenario, or at the end of a campaign, rather, um, but it is conditional on that plus one damage, and that does sometimes matter, and it, like, when you have multiple enemies on you, that's when you want the extra damage most. So it is a staple, but you kind of don't want it to be your only weapon, and it does get outclassed by some weapons later in the campaign. This is an A card for me. Um, it's really good, and um, it was a staple for a reason, it was tabooed for a reason, um, it's not breaking the game, but Machete holds up. Um, shotgun. <laughs> oh, shotgun's a controversial one. Um, people love and hate the shotgun. It is, it's so much fun. It's a fun card. It's like one of those cards, um, I think for a lot of these guns, there's this really wonderful thing for me where I can sort of hear them going off when I play them. Like when I spend a chip on shotgun and I pull a token from the bag, I can hear the sound it makes. I can like, I can like picture it happen. It feels satisfying to do it. And the shotgun, there is no doubt, is a lot of fun. You put a couple of extra ammo on it, um, and it... It swings for a really large amount. Um, in it obviously doesn't match Guardian's like class identity in the same way it matches Rogues in like the modern card pool, right? Um, but I don't care. I do love the shotgun. Is it good? Yes, I'm gonna say yes. I had the last time I ran it, I had some really bad luck with token pulls on it. Every time I fired this thing, it like. Because you're getting plus three to the attack, but you're, like, sort of not really, right? Because you want to be succeeding by way more than, like, plus one, right? If you if you fire this and you, like, just hit, um, uh, then you've done one damage. You've, like, wasted one of your few shotgun shots. Um, and so you sort of actually do need a lot of combat boost support 
to allow shotgun to work, even though it looks like you don't need that. So it is like a piece that does require a lot of support, right? You need to add a lot of extra ammo to it. You need to have a lot of combat boosts to support it. And it is expensive for that, um, which keeps it from being really top tier. Um, but that said, it still does a lot of damage. Um, I am gonna put it in B, I think. Obviously, it is better than Roland's 38, just like as a reminder. The fact that it costs 4 XP means that it is facing higher competition to get where it is. Um, Switchblade. Come on, Switchblade. Um, Switchblade. So a lot of these cards you're gonna have to sort of think about in the context of the investigators who can take them, right? Like, um... Shotgun makes a lot more sense for for Mark than it does for Carson, obviously, right? Um, and uh, this is... <laughs> that's true for every weapon in the game. Um, Switchblade is, like, sort of Tony's, like, signature, like, his second signature. Um, uh, that's not strictly true. There's a lot of weapons here that Tony really likes. Um, but Tony kind of turned Switchblade on in a way that hadn't been true as much before. Um, and Winifred also I found really likes- Winifred likes all of these. Winifred's- I love Winifred. Um, it is a card that requires some support, and when it first came out, I think everybody could unanimously agree that Switchblade level zero was kind of a dud. Um, I- I think, you know, it can perform if you give it some support. It can, it can it, it's, it's in C. It's in C. There's people who work really well, and it works really well in Tony. It works really well in Winifred. Um, I'm probably not taking it too much outside of them. The main benefit of Switchblade, honestly, is that it is so, so cheap. And speaking of, Switchblade level 2 um, is all of the things that you know and love about Switchblade level 0, um, but better. Um, it's so, so cheap, and giving that plus two combat really reduces the amount that you need to pour into this card to make it happen. Um, it kind of becomes a plus zero plus two, um, or sorry, a plus zero plus one as a, as a card. Um, and an infinite plus zero plus one um, for the low, low cost of like one dollar no actions in a hand slot is pretty respectable. Um, that lets you get a lot done. Um, it is taboo to be up plus one experience, so this costs three experience to include in your deck, um, which is not insignificant. But even with that much, I'm still giving it an A. Um, this, is a this is a really effective card. Not like this card. <laughs> There's nothing strictly wrong with 41 Derringer, but uh, like again, same deal with a Switchblade. Having an ability that says you get plus two combat and you need to succeed by two or more to get the extra damage, essentially says you get a plus zero, plus one to the attack. Um, and plus one zero, plus one to an attack is very, very good when you can do it an infinite number of times. It is not good when you can do it three times and it costs you three dollars in an action to put out. I'm not impressed with 41 Derringer. 41 Derringer gets a D. What I am impressed with is 41 Derringer. Um, <laughs> I love 41 Derringer level 2. I think this is one of the best um, uh, weapon upgrades in the entire game. Suddenly, this card is giving you additional actions once per turn if you can put enough ammo on it to keep shooting with it. Um, uh, and it also is... Um, uh, you do need to put more pump more into it in order to get that out of it, but it also gives the damage more freely. And I find that at the time that I have this card, I can pretty consistently get an action per turn out of it. Um, I've done incredible things with this in Leo. I've done incredible things with this in Tony. I've done incredible things in this with Winifred. I've done, this is a, this is a great card. I love this card. Um, I am, I'm honestly genuinely tempted to give this card an S tier, but I'm not going to do that. That's not fair. I'm going to give it an A tier. That's what it deserves. Um, knife. Oh, knife. Everybody needs something to put their proxies in. <laughs> it's the main virtue of knife. I know some people talk about doing, like, knife juggling things with Yorick, um, but that's a meme. That doesn't, that's not, like, a real strategy. Yorick has something better to be pulling out of his discard every single time. I've never had a turn where I, like, killed something with Yorick, and I was like, oh boy, I sure wish I had a knife in my discard pile I can pull back. That's not, not even at level zero. Um, that's, that's just people trying to invent a reason to use knife. Which is fine. It's fun to, it's fun to, it's like a fun little challenge card of like, how do you make knife interesting? And the answer is with Yorick recursion. Um, uh, obviously knife is a terrible card. Um, it's valuable for it to ha be in the game. I'm glad that knife exists. Um, I love knife. 
Um, I look at Knife all the time because I store all of my proxies in it whenever I don't have the newest expansion. Um, it's a bad card. <laughs> um, <laughs> baseball bat. Okay. I should hate baseball bat. Um, cause the last time I played it, um, I drew a skull like every single time I swung it. <laughs> it was really, really bad. Um, and I don't even think that most of the recursion people really like this. Um, because, uh, like, like it takes up two hand slots for Yorick and the other recursion people are mostly doing scavenging. So it's like, do you know what I mean? Um, but like getting a plus two plus one until you get unlucky, um, for $2 is like significant. I, I do think that it's a little bit of an unlucky weapon. I think that um, it it breaks at really important moments, but it gets a lot done before it breaks. So you sort of, I think, treat it like a gun that you don't know how much ammunition it has. Um, and given that, um, I do think that firing at a plus two, plus one is really valuable, and um, you're likely to get enough uses out of it to justify paying two dollars for it. Um, I think this is this is worth a B. This is worth a B. Um, the unreliability is a problem. Like with a gun, you know how much ammo you have and that's valuable. Um, so I, I can't justify putting it up to A, um, but I also can't justify putting it down to C, so. Um, baseball bat two, I lost this somewhere in here. Where did I put baseball bat two in the actual, there we go, it's down here. Um, Baseball Bat 2 is a significant improvement on Baseball Bat 0. Um, just popped my, just rolled my chair over some bubble wrap. Let's put that away. Um, when it breaks, you can either return it to your hand or you can let it break still and it does an additional point of damage. It's, you know, it's a three damage attack, but you can't guarantee when it's going to do three damage. It really does soften the sting of it breaking on you in an opportune moment. Um, uh, is it worth 2 XP? Yes, I think this is most of the time going to be worth 2 XP to buy. Um, I don't think it's going to put it a whole tier up, but I feel comfortable putting Baseball Bat 2 uh, in pretty much the same tier. Am I, do I, do I bring it up? Do I pop it up to A? Like, obviously it does a much, much better card. Is it 2 XP better? Yeah, it's more than 2 XP better. I'll put, I'll put, I can't put it in A. I, yes, I can. Yes, I can. Not S. No, absolutely not. I can I can put Baseball Bat 2 in A. Like, part of it genuinely is, like, you have to consider the card pool that's around. The, baseball Bat is the first survivor weapon that we've looked at so far. Um, and the survivor weapons, you'll see broadly over time, I'm going to be ranking mo mostly lower than the Guardian and Rogue weapons. Um, uh, there's a couple mystic weapons in here, no seeker weapons. Um, you're gonna see that I'm gonna be ranking survivor weapons relatively low. I don't think well of most of them. Um, so the fact that, like, Baseball Bat is somewhere to put your XP weapons-wise makes it valuable. Jenny's 45s. I'm so sorry, Jenny. <laughs> um, it's not a good card, because obviously, like, plus two, plus one... Um, and having a lot of it is good. Two hand slots is rough in Rogue. Um, uh, it wasn't when Jenny was printed, but it sure is now. Um, and, you know, there is a finite amount of ammo that goes on this thing. Um, and, and when you play it, you have to blow all of your money. Um, and uh, if Jenny was different, this card would be better, really. Like, if the card pool had, had turned differently around Jenny... Um, this card would have improved in a way it just hasn't. Um, I feel like I'm going to go C for this. Like, plus two, plus one is not nothing. I think it is it is worth something for it to be plus two, plus one. Um, so I'm not going to give it D. Um, but I can't in good conscience give it above a C, especially given it's a signature, and her signature could have been anything, and it was this, and it's not that good. Um, Blackjack, level zero! <laughs> Um, uh, Blackjack's level zero is, um, uh, infinite plus one plus zeros, which is uh, not worth anything. Um, 
plus one plus zeros that you know protect you from hitting teammates which is you know i guess nice if you're a player who has anxiety um uh, but blackjack is the main thing that blackjack is good for in my opinion um is for being the a single best level zero to level two upgrade in the game <laughs> I love Blackjack 2. I don't know that Blackjack 2 is necessarily, like, it's probably not fair to give Blackjack 2 an A tier situation. Um, it is an infinite number of plus two plus ones as long as the enemy is engaged with a different investigator at your location. It, it's, it's conditional, um, so I probably can't justify giving a weapon where you have a conditional plus two plus one um that you spend xp on the same tier as machete a conditional plus one plus one that you don't spend xp on i think because of the xp um i have to put this in b tier um but know that i am really really tempted to put this in a tier and also know that i take this card all the time i love this card it's one of my favorite melee cards in the game um uh, i I love it. I take it all the time. Um, Fire Axe, I do not take all the time because I don't like Survivor. <laughs> I'm sorry, Survivor. Um, uh, there are many things about you that I love. There are many Survivors that I love. I just don't like most of your cards. Um, uh, and especially, I think your weapons have let you down in a big way. Um, this is pretty much good if, if and only if you're doing Dark Horse. And I tend to think that... Um, like, I struggle with Dark Horse because I want to spend my money on stuff. I want to have money so that I can pay P play Peter, and I can play Jessica, and I can play Alter Fate, and I can, like, um, do all these things that you want to spend money on. Um, and, you know, there's some tech for that at this point, obviously. Um, nothing Left to Lose exists now, and that's wonderful. And, you know, you can get some value out of Granny Orn. And I, like, I get all of these things. Um... I just think that Fire Axe is kind of supporting an archetype that hasn't gotten enough <laughs> to really thrive. Even with like we've got the new Fire Axe and the new um, the new Mariner's Compass and the new Dark Horse with his last set. Um, all of this is obviously intended to take Dark Horse into a better place. Um, I still don't think Dark Horse is in a place that has enough support to make it certainly not fun and engaging to me, but. Um, I also don't even think that I've seen it go off and be good. Admittedly, I haven't played it that much, and so this is partly my fault. So if you've, like, had a really good experience with Dark Horse decks, um, and you think that I'm missing something, I'm totally open to hearing that. I don't want to, um, I don't want to, like, be saying negative things and, like, squash anybody's hopes and dreams. Like, if you, like, if you've had a knife build that actually works for you, God, please let me know about that. I would be so excited to hear about your knife build that actually works. Um, uh, but Fire Axe, I, I have to put in C. Um, I think Fire Axe is, like... It's level zero. It's good enough at what it does. Um, it's not, it's not. Fire X Preston is the, is the comment here. Um, I can see that. Yeah, I think, cause you do get to, you get plus six on an attack with it, with him. And that puts you at a, at a seven. Um, it's, it's definitely like an occasional splash thing, right? It's like using up a lot of the resources you get in that turn in order to do like a little bit of damage. Um, so, like, any, like, any of these weapons that I've put in, um, any category, like, they, like, they're different in different people, right? This is a very no-nuance sort of a, sort of an analysis of things. Um, different cards do well in different people, right? I might put, um, I might put Baseball Bat higher in Yorick than I would in Rita. Um, and, and similarly, yeah, Fire Axe does perform better in Preston, um, and, and I am trying to take that into account. I just think that overall, um, it, it has fewer niches and its niches are not as powerful. Um, on the other hand, um, uh, Fire Axe level two is also going in C tier. <laughs> or yeah, C tier. It's going in exactly the same place. Um, I think that, <laughs> I mean, paying two XP for fast is fine. It's fine to do that. <laughs> I don't have anything else to say about Fire Axe level two. It's fine. It goes in exactly the same, the same, the same tier. Um, Adam G. Fraser asks, "What is the go-to survivor weapon? Is it Meat Cleaver?" Let me look at the survivor weapons here. Um, God, like at level zero, like my honest, my honest reality of it is that generally my go-to 
survivor level zero weapon um, is an off-class weapon, right? If I'm playing Yorick, my survivor level zero go-to weapon is a guardian weapon. Um, and if I'm, if I'm playing, you know, if I'm, if you're trying to play a combat Stella or like a combat Rita, you know, somebody who doesn't get off-class cards and I'm forced to pick survivor stuff, I'm, uh, sad about it. Um, because I don't like my choices as much, um, and then I, I pout a little bit, and then I probably play the, the pea shooter, the colt, and uh, yeah, this, I guess, I mean, baseball bat, yeah, yeah, it's not... <laughs> Pickings are slim. It is rough out here for survivors. Derringer is so limited. We're gonna we're gonna get to the Derringer. Um, uh, yeah, I mean that's the that's the thing about Derringer is that the, the ammo is very limited. Kukri, Kukri's a meme. It's F. This isn't the way the design of the game worked. Um, I really can't wait for someday um, the the design to come out um, where. Uh, this card suddenly becomes good, right? Suddenly we have the, the combination of cards that suddenly makes a Kukri build happen. Um, and uh, my greatest hope in life is that they don't fucking dare cancel or second edition this game before we get the Kukri payoff. I want the Kukri payoff. Um, Springfield, M1903. Um, this card has a... Uh, a, a, a taboo that lets it uh, fire into adjacent locations. So we have a three ammo plus three plus two that can't attack enemies engaged with you, but can attack enemies not at your location. Um, and that's so fun. I think that this, this is one of the best taboos that they've ever done in terms of like, it transforms what this card is. It turns a card that nobody uses because it's really bad into a card that is not just usable and functional, but also like fun and interesting. And like the limitation that made it difficult is still in play. Um, but that like isn't the thing that ruins the card. It obviously improves a lot in four player where you can have a different player um, like grab whatever enemy that jumps on you. So, you know, if if, if you draw an enemy during the enemy phase, either your other fighter can kill it or, you know, your rogue can evade it for you or whatever it is, um, or evade it for, yeah. Um, and you can busy yourself, you know, shooting acolytes that are in the other room or um, killing the boss that you're all running away from. I've, I've played a run with this. It's really, really fun. Is it good? Three ammo, Ugh, fuck, plus three, plus two. That's a, that's a big hit. That's a big hit. That's gotta be good. For four, for four and four, for four resources, four, four XP, I'm calling that an A tier weapon. I'm doing it. I'm putting this in A tier. I'm doing it. Um, Springfield M1903. You heard it here. I think this, I think this gun fucks. Um, I think it fucks. Lightning gun. Oh my god, lightning gun. Um, Lightning gun has gotten a lot worse over time. I mean, getting to reload the ammo is great. The combat boast is not that relevant for anybody not named Carson. Obviously, Carson likes the lightning gun a lot. Um, plus five, plus two, three times. It's so fucking expensive. It was released in the in the set with Zoe, um, and she's like one of the only people who can really use it because it costs so much money. Unless you've got like Bob on your team to help you out with it. Um, it's really, really five XP and six dollars for what it does. Like it's a really consistent hit. It is the name of the game in terms of consistency. But God, the cost on that! Like it, like it doesn't help you kill enemies if it's the only thing you can buy. You know, I would rather have a charisma and a B cop than this. Um, you know, charisma and B cop too. I'm gonna give it a B tier. Um, I know I just said a lot of really downer things about it, um, but plus five plus two is nothing to sneeze at. You also like have to you have to respect that. I can't put it up in A or S, but but you gotta respect plus five plus two. Chicago typewriter. Um, yeah. So. Uh, <sighs> It 
it's an awkward gun for me. I know that a lot of people really like this gun. Um, I know that this is um, a gun that is reasonably popular and that I just haven't had as much experience playing with. I, I, I looked at this gun the first time and I was like, my actions are too valuable to be spending them get, getting a plus two combat. Um, that said, if we ignore that part of it and we say this gun for one action fights for plus two plus two, and it does that four times for four and five. Yeah, I think that that's, that's really strong. That's a lot of damage. That's 12 damage just on the gun if you put no additional ammo on it. And it reloads up to four if you, um, you know, swift reload it back to its, um, back to its full ammo cost. Um, I think that's got to be better than lightning gun, all told. It, you know, it doesn't have as much of a combat boost. But hopefully you don't need plus five combat, you know? Um, so, I, I I never play it, but I think I have to put it in A. I think I have to. Even though I don't play it ever. Maybe I should play this card. Much to consider. Admittedly, there are a lot of other rogue guns that I like a lot better than this. Um... Let's 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 see how we feel about the thirty two Colt. We feel poorly about the thirty two Colt. Plus zero, plus one, six times, um, is a lot of damage. Um, having no combat boost is a little bit rough for a main weapon. You know, some people can make it work. Um, I've tried making it work in like a bandolier Nathaniel deck, and then I was like, I don't actually need the I don't need the bullets on this I'm, I'm really just doing okay as just Nathaniel using all my events I never found an excuse to fire it um yeah I don't know it's basically kind of just why why am I not playing machete <laughs> why am I not playing machete um the upgraded one I kind of feel similarly like it doesn't, it, that one doesn't give you a combat boost either. It just extends the amount of ammo in it. It's just a gun that has infinite ammo on it. And like, that's kind of fun for some of the upgrade stuff. You know, I imagine there is a fun 32 Colt build where you put a bunch of the gun upgrade stuff on it, but the gun upgrade co stuff comes with ammunition. I'm not really, that's not, that's not the main problem that I'm having with my guns. Um, I think, I think I, do I feel well? I'm not gonna put this in F. This is another D. It sits right next to its cousin. Spirit of Thame is a weapon. <laughs> it's not for fighting, so it's kind of weird to rank it on this list. Do I rank it as how it how it serves as a weapon, or do I just rank it as a card? Obviously, as a weapon, um, it's pretty bad. You get once per turn, you get a plus two, plus zero, and you're a mystic. Um, nobody wants that. That's not the thing that this dagger is here for. This dagger is here for giving you a once per turn plus two on a spell, um, which is fine um, and would be a little bit higher on here. I mean, it's not like great, but it's like fine. Um, I think I'm ranking it as a weapon because this is a tier list and you're deciding what you're doing as a weapon. And as a weapon, this card sucks. <laughs> great. Um, Gravedigger's Shovel. Um, this has at least the, the dignity above Spirit of Thame to be fighting for plus two, like, every time you swing it, instead of just the once a turn that you swing it. Um, but I still think this card is really bad. Um, even Yorick, who it's printed for, obviously, like, it looks like it's supposed to be Yorick's second signature, right? Oh, it's a Gravedigger shovel. Yorick should be using this all the time. But Yorick doesn't want to be using this all the time. There's no acceleration in this whatsoever. Um, fighting for plus two, plus zero is not enough. Um, if there's no damage acceleration, I'm not into it. Um, the leveled up version, I would put this even a tier lower if I could. I would put this in F minus. This, I genuinely think this card is insulting. Um, this card is, this card is fucking insulting. Um, like the thing that you are spending two XP on, um, is either you can remove it from the game to discover an additional clue, um, like, once per scenario, you get an additional clue out of it, um, and it costs $1 less 
if you're like recurring it which obviously you're meant to be recurring it but the card pool doesn't like the only way that you're realistically recurring this is either with scavenging in which case um why well, like that's not a fight action that's doing anything um and frankly um it's not if you're if you're scavenging anyway why do you need this to be discovering clues do you know what i mean um or you're yorick and this is a card that fills up a hand slot and doesn't let you do any acceleration it's this is insane to me this is i don't like this card i don't know i don't i don't know what happened with this card maybe someday we'll find the recursion strategy that isn't either scavenging or yorick and then this yorick and then this card will get better um but we haven't and it isn't thumbs down from me <laughs> Um, Knuckle Duster. Oh, that's a controversial one, isn't it? Um, plus one, or plus zero, plus one, and making it more dangerous. Um, it's scary, it's fun, it's roguey. Um, unfortunately, rogues just have better options. Um, this is a D card. Having a consistent, a melee infinite plus zero, plus one is valuable. It's not nothing, but you need to put a lot of support behind it. Um, uh, yeah, it just, it just doesn't measure up. I really want to see an upgrade of Knuckle Duster. They talked about it on one of the Creative Cards live streams like two, three years ago. Um, they were talking about what card to do and um, Knuckle Duster got brought up and I think MJ was like, ooh, that's a really interesting one. Like somebody in the room was really like, like latched onto that one. Um, and I I was like, oh, I really want to see what they do with an upgraded Knuckle Duster. Like, like make this card good for me because it's such a like potentially rich design. Um, of like like raising the stakes and making it like it's very roguey um and i would love to see this card be good um trench knife there's like this supremely contrarian part of me that wants to be like okay no you guys this is not a weapon um really this is a hand item that says engage actions you perform do not provoke attacks of opportunity don't look at the second part look at the first part it's actually kind of interesting and good if you were looking at the first part but it's not kind of interesting and good if you're looking at the first part it's not um uh, so rarely do i need to uh, like engage an enemy while i am engaged with an enemy um I i'm i'm a guardian This is an F tier. <laughs> Getting kind of a reverse bell curve on the, on the the the, the thing. But it's curious. I, I'm not. I, I didn't go in expecting any particular. I mean, I guess I was sort of expecting a bell curve. Am I gonna have an S tier weapon in here? Is there anything in here where I'm like, this is an S tier? Yeah, obviously there are. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Just checking. Lupara. I basically never play Lupara. Um, in fact, I literally don't think I've ever played Lupara. Two ammo and like plus one, plus one, or plus two, plus two, if you played it this turn. You know, you're supposed to sleight of hand it out, take a couple of big shots, and then return it. And it is kind of fun for that. Or like bob it out and take a couple of big shots and then return it. It's fun for that. It's good. Is it three XP and three dollars? Good? Probably. Um, I think that like three three damage is a big hit um but the fact that it requires some build around and the fact that it ain't cheap um i think i think it's fair to put this in b i think this feels like let me know if you feel like that's not fair but i feel like this is a a fair b for the for the price of admission um this card does what it's what it's meant to do and it, it occasionally flashes big and it occasionally really lets you down which is something that you want out of robes and in the design space um fins trusty 38 um yeah so uh this is a card that we're going to sort of be seeing a copy of later the fact that it's fast and two dollars is nice because it means that you can get it out quickly um walker i know you're going to be watching this in the future and you're going to be telling me that this card is probably so good or something um no, you're not. You're going to be telling me that it's fine. Like, fast is nice. Like, fast is nice, but it's not going to be totally changing your game plan. Um, and, you know, your fin, so your combat could would like a little bit more than plus two, but, like, you can get by with it. I mean, it's a really simple, right? It's fast two for three ammo that do plus two, plus one. It's okay. It's okay. Like, like the fast is nice on it. 
I'm giving it a C. I'm giving it a C. Survival knife. Ooh, I'm gonna get in trouble. I'm gonna get in trouble for survival knife. Um, I don't play thorns that often is a thing about me. Um, I, I don't like Tommy. I don't like Daniela. Um, I don't like a lot of the investigators who really like to do thorns. I mean, I know that you can build Leo into thorns and you can build Zoe into thorns and like all these, like guardians are pretty, like it's pretty easy to build just a guardian into thorns because so many of their cards sort of revolve around either taking damage or taking aggro or whatever. Almost any guardian you can make thorns. Um, uh, except maybe like Nathaniel, uh, Carolyn, obviously. Um, um, I never find deck space in a lot of those people to include thorns. Um, and I think that survival knife is really useful as an offhanded weapon in its particular niche. Um, like I really like it in Parallel Zoe where it lets you get some off round damage. Um, and you know, I imagine it, it, it does do a lot of work in Daniela and in Tommy and these investigators who I, I don't play. It's not that it's a bad card. I just think that for a lot of people, it's like the or offhanded weapon, right? It's like survival knife goes in every single deck that they play. Um, and that is not true for me. I think as far as being generally broadly useful, it's good. Um, I don't think it's great. Um, I think that I will happily put Survival Knife in B. I think Survival Knife is a, is a B weapon for me. Um, and I honestly might put Survival Knife level 2 in the same place. Um, getting a plus 2, plus 0 in general for your combat, um, and then getting a plus 2, plus 1 before the enemy attacks you. Um, like, like obviously Daniela doesn't like that, but most people, she can't take it anyway. Um... I think that I am likely to take Survival Knife 2 a little more often than Survival Knife 0. I think both of them are B weapons for me. I think the Survival Knife lives com it's 2 XP is totally worth the upgrade. I think both of these cards are about as good as each other considering the XP cost. And I know that some of you are going to want to be in the comments right now telling me that I'm wrong about that and I love that and I really want to know. I genuinely um, uh, want to... T I don't just want you to tell me that Survival Knife is good. What I want you to do is to tell me your best Survival Knife story. Um, like, give me a specific moment when Survival Knife really wowed you. That's that's what I want from you. Um, ornate Bow. Oh, our first agility weapon. Um, huge for Rita, huge for Ursula when it first came out. This was like um, a, a defining huge weapon for a long time. This was like... Um, this is our first good neutral weapon as well. Our first neutral weapon that was like worth playing, yeah. Um, and obviously it's a little bit slow, right? It's doing functionally one and a half damage per turn unless you are doing some like venturer shit on it. And right, there are there are like synergies that happen there, right? You can use venturer to to resupply this. Um, uh, you can use um, can you use cleaning kit on this? Somebody tell- I'm- I'm not gonna look it up right now because I don't want to mess up the- <laughs> I bet you can use cleaning kit on this though. So guardian- guardians get some- I guess guardians, the problem is, are not- tend, tend to be very agility focused, but, um, you know, sk skids, <laughs> um, or, you know, uh, if you just have a guardian on your team who is supporting you, right, is like one of the functions that guardian has. Um, so there is there is synergy that exists broadly mostly you're doing one and a half damage attacks um, and it's pretty expensive for that but it is a neutral card so it sort of is supposed to be a little bit expensive for it because everybody can take it and that's like the way that it's balanced um, I think I think ornate bow gets a fair B it does a lot of work in the people who need it um, I like C is maybe more fair but I'm putting it in B it's my show. I'm putting it in B. Um, the bar. The bar is definitely a C weapon. Um, uh, it's very expensive for, like, honestly, sort of just being a 45 automatic again, except that you can distribute the ammo um, a little bit 
more effectively and and ammo re rep replenishment cards like extra ammunition um sort of do less on the bar than they do on other guns because they are worth an additional plus one plus one on the bar whereas in other guns they might be worth more than that right on the on the on the on the shotgun they're worth you know plus three plus however many and um on the on the lightning gun they're worth plus five plus two whereas on this they're worth plus one plus one so like a lot of the gun tech doesn't work as well on m1918 bar and it costs a lot of ammunition and two hands i'm really talking myself down here is it is it kind of just a 45 automatic again no the ability to distribute damage and to have a big hit is a very big deal um that is worth thinking about it is it is it is valuable it is probably not 4 xp valuable um it's living in c tier and i think i'm being generous about that colt vest pocket absolutely the fuck not <laughs> uh, that's not fair i'm i'm being i'm being a hater i'm being a hater if i put it in d i'm being a hater um plus 1 plus 1 five times as long as you can do it in one round um, and obviously it wants to be sleight of handed out. You're never going to use all five of those bullets if you, if, like, either way. Two dollars is not that much. Um, it's kind of just an event, right? It's kind of an event card where you just shoot for a bunch of times once. Anybody who wants this has other cards that they want more than this. I'm putting this in D. Sorry, Colt Vest Pocket. It's not that you're bad, um, it's just that you're not good. Old hunting rifle. I am an old hunting rifle defender. Um, I know that there is some discourse in this about, and in, in Card of the Day a few days ago in the Mythos Busters Discord or a couple weeks ago, maybe. Um, uh, in, in some ways, it, um, uh, baseball bats, uh, lame older brother, cool older brother, whatever. Um, it costs one more. Um, it has a limited number of supplies, but if you draw a skull or an auto fail, um, it jams and you have to clear it instead of it fully discarding. And you can, you can replenish it. You can reload it, which is nice. Obviously, um, this is not, obviously this is not a good weapon. I just think it's fun. I'm gonna be fair. It is not a good weapon. It's just fun. Okay. I've cleared that. Let me let me clear my mind and then look at the chart and decide where I think it should go fairly. <sighs> Fuck, it's a D weapon. Oh, I love it though, but it's a D weapon. But I love it though, but it's a D weapon. Um, hello, Jaden. It's so good to see you. Thank you for being here. We're ranking all of the weapons. Um, uh, we're we're making pretty good time, I think. Actually, I mean, we've been here for an hour, but. <laughs> Um, and, uh, keep in mind that the 3 XP is a part of the opportunity cost here, um, and survivors do not have any good ways of reloading this weapon. Um, you're probably getting a grand total of 9 damage out of this weapon, and you may need to spend more than 4 actions to get those 9 damage out of it. So... I'm being fair, I'm putting it in D, it's a bad weapon, you shouldn't spend 3 XP and $3 on it, but you should if you like having fun. <laughs> um, Time Worn Brand, wow, this was, uh, this was like, this like set the tone for weapons for years, for years, it was like, it was like Time Worn Brand was the big fuck off XP weapon that you could buy at the end of a campaign because it just says, as an action, um, uh, do a plus two plus one fight. and costs you five XP and five dollars, takes up one hand slot, super simple. That second ability technically exists, but you don't, you don't need to think about it or worry about it. It doesn't come into play most of the time. Um, most of the thing that people are thinking about, I mean, no, I use it, I use the ability, but most of the time when people are talking about Time Worn Brand, thinking about Time Worn Brand, comparing things to Time Worn Brand, they just mean it is an infinite melee plus two plus one. And it's a relic, which matters sometimes, um, if you're fighting like a poltergeist or whatever. Um, uh, it's sort of, the problem with it, I think, these days is that there is 
I think no faction that can take Time Warren brand that wants to take Time Warren brand that doesn't have a better option, right? Like you can still take Time Warren brand and make it worth it in like Amanda if you're doing like a combat Amanda, or you could take it in, um, I don't know, like a Vincent if you're doing a combat Vincent. Um, you could take it in survivors because I don't think survivors have any good payoff weapons. Ah! Um, but like any guardian has better things that they can be buying. Any rogue has better things they can be buying. Um, any mystic has better options. Um, so uh, it's it's tricky because it's kind of been out competed by things, but that doesn't make it bad, right? I have to I have to acknowledge I have to give some respect to Time Warner Brand and what it is and what it has been for the game. Um, it's expensive, but it does hit like a fucking truck, um, and I think I am gonna put it in B for that. Um, flamethrower um uh what's the what's the taboo on this one it's like it's like plus one xp or something like that it's like a like a little bit more expensive um i think this is obviously an a tier weapon i think that it's so fun that it has both two hands and a body slot so you can't bandolier this one it's like specifically don't bandolier this if you're taking this this is your weapon unless you've got like brand of Cthulhu or whatever um, incidentally, I want to mention, as you may have already been able to pick up in the course of this video, um, this is not like combat cards. This is all cards with the UK weapon trait. So, um, a couple of things that are going to come up, like Brand of Cthulhu is not in here. And as Guardian, you have access to Brand of Cthulhu, and I might put Brand of Cthulhu, um, a higher, you know, Brand of Cthulhu could go on here somewhere, but I'm already doing 97 cards and I don't want to overdo it. Um, and the same thing with, um, a really, really notable ex exception that's going to, that's like, probably should have already come up discursively, um, uh, is Fire Extinguisher, which is not a weapon. Um, it is a, it's, it's tool, I think it's melee, but it's not a weapon. So it's not on this list. I'm not gonna be, like, officially ranking Fire Extinguisher, but I do want to mention it because Fire Extinguisher 3 has become such, like, a, a sort of a survivor staple because it is an infinite plus one, plus one, right? It's a melee, plus one combat, um, plus one damage for three XP and three dollars. Um, and there is a second ability on it that I will never use because I'm never going to exile my 3 XP card for a set of evades. Are you kidding me? Absolutely the fuck not. Um, so Fire Extinguisher is mostly there as like an infinite melee attack, um, uh, which kind of makes it, um, like a machete, but it costs three experience <laughs> points. Um, and that's, you know, one of the, one of the, one of the stable, reliable survivor cards that survivor stick when they want a leveled up weapon. Um, I'm so... <laughs> I'm so fucking sorry. I'm so bitter about it. Um, someday they'll, someday they'll print a really good survivor payoff weapon and I'll be like, oh my god, Rita's alive. Um, um, but we're talking about flamethrower. <laughs> um, flamethrower is really great because it can distribute your damage. Plus four is a huge combat boost. The fact that you get to fight whichever enemy at your location is the weakest one. Um, also means your flamethrower is basically guaranteed to hit, which is wonderful flavor-wise, and getting to distribute the damage is wonderful. It's good. It's a really powerful card. Um, it costs a lot of XP, and it deserves a lot of XP. Uh, if you have a flamethrower, you can kill anything around you. It's great. <laughs> I have nothing to say about flamethrower. That's why I spent the whole time talking about a different weapon. Um, Detective Colt 1911s. Um, so the sort of fun thing about this one, I mean, it's it's... In some ways, um, it's just the 45 automatic again, right? Except instead of costing zero XP, um, it's your signature card. And isn't that maybe, you know, means it should be worse than the 45 automatic. But the two things that you get out of this are one, it gives you a little bit of hunch deck manipulation, which is like kind of nice, but not necessarily like I haven't found it when I'm playing Joe to be that big of a deal. Um, but it also um, essentially takes up no slots, right? Um, if you're willing to be using your other hand slots on tools, um, like it, like it definitely suggests a way that you're building it, but, um, it sort of like it replaces its own hand slot. So it's effectively slot free in some ways. Um, and that makes it really, really valuable. Um, I still don't think that it ultimately does that much. Like $4 is still a lot of dollars for basically for vicious blows. So I, I have a hard time ranking it too highly. Um, I actually do think it's still going to end up in the same place as the 45 automatic down in C tier. Um, you know, it's not bad. I'm not impressed. 
Um, you could be doing worse things with your, you know, paying four dollars for four vicious blows is fine. It's fine. It's fine. Um, Twilight Blade. Um, as I said earlier, we are not measuring these by uh, how good the card is. We are measuring them by how good of a weapon they are. And Twilight Blade is not a good weapon. <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> um, Meat Cleaver. I, um, Meat Cleaver was proposed earlier in the chat as being potentially the go-to survivor level zero weapon. And I don't take Meat Cleaver that often. Um, I... I think that's mostly a force of habit more than anything else. I like earlier in the lifespan of the game. I still don't even. It's from Circle. What am I talking? It's from Circle Undone. This isn't from early in the game. When it first showed up, I was scared of it. I was like, I was like, I don't want to be taking horror from my from my weapon. Um, in order to be dealing damage to it, right? I can only put so much horror on Peter Sylvester per turn. Um, but I'm older now, and I'm wiser now, and I know that that's not true. I can put any amount of horror on Peter Sylvester per turn. I'm very powerful, and I can't be stopped. Um, and, uh, like, Survivor just has so many ways of soaking at this point um, that I really am not alarmed about the horror in Survivor anymore. So I guess ultimately this is sort of a meat cleaver situation again, or a meat cleaver, a machete situation again. Um, I don't want to put it up with machete. I don't feel good about this being machete level. This isn't a machete. You can't actually be taking three horror per turn from your weapon. But you can be taking two horror per turn from your weapon. And there's no conditions on it. Do I have to put this in A? I don't want to put... This doesn't feel like it belongs in A. I'm not putting this in A. I don't have, like, a good justification for it. This is a B weapon. I just... I don't feel right about putting it in A. Again, someone please tell me your Meat Cleaver story that convinces me that Meat Cleaver goes in A tier because I feel feel like I'm doing this, I feel like I should be putting it higher than I am. Um, like, just by thinking about it next to me, next to Machete, it just feels like they should be on the same tier. Um, or I, no, other way around, I intellectually, an analytical brain can't come up with a reason why they wouldn't be on the same tier, but they don't feel on the same tier. They feel very, very different to me. Um... Uh, Jaden says, Meat Cleaver plus Sparrow Mask, are we considering combos? We are considering the card pool that they exist in broadly, right? I'm not, I don't believe in, an, in analyzing a card or an investigator or any part of the game without the context of, like, the greater game that it exists inside of. Um, and yeah, like, Survivor does really combo with, um, like, taking damage a lot. They really, they do like, this does like Sparrow Mask, um... I've never had a problem keeping Sparrow Mask charged, personally. That's not really been a... That's not been a problem that I felt the need to find a solution to so far. Um, but yeah, it's true that there are synergies for this thing. Somebody give me your Meat Cleaver story. Tell me tell me that I'm being crazy in one direction or another. Someone please, at some point, you know, I'll, I'll put this on YouTube. Someone on YouTube tell me why I'm being crazy in one direction or the other on Meat Cleaver. This is, it's weird how torn I am. Before I, like, had this up and read the card, I would have been like, yeah, Meat Cleaver's a C card, and now I'm reading it, and I'm like, this is better than I think it is. Maybe this is my, maybe this is why I'm such a bitch about survivors. Um, it's because I've been undervaluing Meat Cleaver. <laughs> um, 45 Thompson! Oh my god, I've been waiting to talk about 45 Thompson. This is sort of like the... Like, one of the key pieces that we've been missing in talking about, like, the, the level zero guardian suite, um, and also the level zero rogue suite, is this huge-ass gun that takes up two hand slots and costs $6, but also gives you five shots at plus two, plus one. Um, how often is that worth it? Often. I often consider as 45 Thompson for my deck, um... Two hand slots is rough, but as a guardian, you're probably um, just using that for weapons anyway. Um, plus two, plus one is really significant at level zero, and five ammo is nothing to sneeze at. Um, I think that this is a really, really respectable weapon for level zero. Um, I want to put this in B. This is a lot of there's a lot of weapons in B right now. I'm really noticing that. I'm not doing anything about it. <laughs> Um, if there ends up, I'm, I'm not planning a curve. If it ends up being just a million cards in B, that's how it goes. 
It's a B card. Um, this one, though. Oh, the money gun, as it is colloquially known um, amongst uh, me and some of the people who I have made play this game. When I, it's the money gun. Um, I, uh, you know, it's the same exact gun. It doesn't help your combat at all. The only thing this does is it gives you money however many times you shoot it. And I have always found that as soon as I play this gun, I am never again worried about money for any reason in the rest of the entire game. I just have as much money as I want forever. Um, which is crazy because it ultimately is still a gun that costs a dollar, right? It doesn't ever make its its value back. Um, and maybe that's just like a, a biasing effect of like, I had to get to $6 to play this in the first place. Um, but I don't know, like, it makes, it makes extra ammo cost negative one dollars, um, it makes, uh, it makes custom ammunition cost one dollar, you know, I think, like, I know that the, it doesn't, like, directly help your combat, um, but it helps your combat by virtue of paying for everything else you could ever need, um, I really think this is an A-tier gun. Um, this one I don't think is an A-tier gun. I think that Guardians got the got the better end of the, of the stick in this pair of upgrades. Um, Rogue 45 Thompson, um, it's, it's action compression. And maybe I'm, oh, this is another one where I'm gonna, I'm gonna sit here and I'm gonna look at it because I never sit here and seriously look at it when it's in my collection. And that's going to force me to reevaluate it and what I think about it. And we're going to come out the other side and we're going to be like, God damn it, I should be playing this 44 Thompson more often than I am. Um, I'm scared about the finite amount of ammo that I have in general. But the thing that it's basically doing is just action compression. You get to shoot multiple times for one shot. And you get to do that retroactively. And that is extremely good and worth the money. That's A tier. That's an A tier weapon. I just never play it but I should. It's an A-tier. I should play that. That's fun. Oh, I should play that. <laughs> See, these tier lists are fun because sometimes you like, I should do like a mastery challenge, right? I should do the like, the like you have to play every card in the game over the course of the year. Like the thing that, the thing that the, the, the playing board games people are doing. This is fun. Yeah. Okay. A-tier. <laughs> Um, Enchanted Blade level zero. This is also an A tier card. This goes, this is the staple level zero guardian card. It's a relic. Um, it fights for plus one, plus zero infinitely, and it fights for plus two, plus one, three times. Um, so, it, you know, sort of in some ways, like maybe it's unfair that it's that high because it is basically just a knife and three vicious blows. Um, but a knife and three vicious blows, um, is for, for $3 is better than, um, four vicious blows for $4. And the icon is better too. It's the first time I've mentioned an icon on one of these, but at level zero, it matters more than at, at higher levels. And I think that here, the, the, the combat icon does help a lot. I find that, you know, plus two, plus zero, plus two, plus one on an attack is a lot. And getting that three times for $3 is a pretty cheap way of doing it. Um, it's hard to refill. Um, you know, you're only getting so much use out of it. The scenario is only so long, and the Enchanted Blade will tide you over until you find another weapon. Um, it's obviously not the most powerful, but for level zero, um, it kind of is the most powerful. Um, so it, it, it gets it gets an A. Enchanted Blade level three Guardian. Um, I love Enchanted Blade level three Guardian. Um, it's card draw, and I love card draw. It's you get to spend the charge after you hit instead of beforehand, so it's sort of um, uh, fail protection. And it's horror healing, which is something the Guardians are very hard up for. Um, I think that Guardians totally want to take this pretty off. I love this. I love this weapon. I love this weapon. This is an A-tier a weapon for me. It does a lot of things the Guardians really, really want it to do. Um... Yeah, just a lot of utility all around. Um, the Mystic one I am not impressed by. <laughs> um, yeah. The Mystic gets, like, like, what? They get, like, a total of one more use out of it, and 
they can use two of the uses in one. Like, they can get two really big hits if they want to. Which is not nothing. And the main problem I have with it is that what mystic is using this? Like, what mystic wants to be giving up their hand slot and their arcane slot to be fighting with their combat score? I think in the card pool as it currently exists, I don't love Enchanted Blade level four. I think maybe I actually want to go back and like talking about talking about the the level zero Enchanted Blade. Like I kind of want to put this in A tier for Guardians, but for Mystics, this is like probably down in D tier. Like Mystics don't really want to use this. There's very few Mystics with above a three combat and like fighting at a five is fine but you probably don't have a lot of like side combat boost in mystic it's better in guardian than in mystic is what i'm saying um and similarly um i don't i can't imagine spending three xp on this in just about any mystic currently in the game this is a d tier for me Mark One Grenades. Oh, Mark One Grenades is a card that I always want to play and I never play it. No slots and um, plus two, plus two area of effect damage three times. I love it. It's so fun. Um, is it good? It's, yeah, yeah, it is. Is it four XP good? It's a B. I'm putting it in B. Um, it is really, really powerful, and, like, the no-slots thing is huge. Um, I, I never end up finding space for it, but, like, if somebody else brought it to the table, I would be like, oh, hell yeah, you've brought grenades to the table, right? Um, yeah, no-slots is huge. No-slots is huge. B tier, because it costs 4 XP. Becky, um, uh, Becky is basically, um, she's just a, a cheaper 45 Thompson that refills itself. Um, and don't get me wrong, inf basic, functionally infinite plus two plus one is really valuable. Um, she is sort of like this, the signature for cards that you load up with like custom cards. Um, custom ammunition and, and 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 custom modifications and all of those things. Um, I I can't imagine that this goes anywhere but B tier. <laughs> I can't imagine an argument for this go. Like I guess I could see an argument for C tier maybe. I think this has got to be B. This has got to be B. These, on the other hand, despite being sort of in some ways very similar to Becky, I think they are better than Becky. Um, plus X plus one for attacks. Um, they sort of, you can play them on their own, but you often want to play them together. And I find that I often, you know, I, I actually get a pretty good split of like times when I'm like, okay, fuck it. I got to put the one cult out um, versus feeling like I can hold on to them until they're both out there. Um, Having a way to reload bounties is really wonderful and really powerful. Um, yeah, just the fact that this the fact that this reloads bounties makes it really really strong. Um, in some ways, it's kind of um, just like another version of like it's another extra actions gun. This is an extra actions gun again, and we know how I feel about extra actions guns. We feel like they go in A tier. Hungering blade. Um, it's such a weird card, right? <laughs> it's such a weird card. Um, I like, I like don't remember what the, <laughs> I don't remember exactly what the, what the curse does. It's like, God, I gotta, I gotta, <laughs> I gotta look it up. I gotta look it up. I thought I remembered it, but I gotta look it up. Arc of DV, let's go. Bloodlust. We're looking up Bloodlust, gang. Can you see that? Is that on screen? It is on screen, great. Um, Revelation Roof, two offerings, or take a horror and shuffle it back in. Um, and you can shuffle it into your deck to deal plus one. That's so fucking complicated. 
It's such a complicated little engine. I never play this card, but I'm trying to get my I'm trying to get my brain around it. You shuffle three of these into your deck. Whenever you defeat an enemy with the Hungering Blade, you put a resource on. If there are two resources on the Hungering Blade, you get to attach the Bloodlust to it. If you don't do that, it shuffles. It take you take a horror and shuffle it back. And you can shuffle the Bloodlust back in to make it deal to be make it be a three damage attack instead of a two damage attack. A lot of moving pieces in this combo. I can see how that is fun. Um, where are we? No, no, yes. Um, three damage for one XP is a lot. I want to acknowledge that. And you can get really huge splash for one XP. That's significant. My main problem with this card is and always has been, um, this is the reason that I don't play it, I don't think about it that much, um, is that it eats draws. And Guardian is so anemic on draw. And that is challenging. Um, that, that, that presents a real challenging to the Hungering Blade. Um, where, I mean, but I guess you're essentially just drawing a vicious blow out of it, right? Which is, like, not a bad draw. Like, provided you've killed two enemies with a Hungering Blade by now, which you should have done. Um, I think I've been... I've been cruel to this card. The risk of doing horror is genuine. The risk of losing draw is genuine. Getting an infinite plus zero plus one is also notable. I've been unfair to this card. You really do need to figure out the draw. It is a challenge for it. What do we think, gang? Do we put it in B? I'm gonna... Yeah, let's put it in B. I'll try a Hungering Blade deck sometime. I'll try it sometime. 35 Winchester. Um, fuck. How do you talk about 35 Winchester? Because the, obviously the taboo says that it's on symbol tokens. So this is a, or, or non-negative, sorry, non-negative modifiers tokens. So this is a, this is a bless card. This is a card that you're, that you're using with your favor of the sun. This is a card that you're using with all of McBride. This is a card that you're using with whatever amount of token manipulation that you have. Um, the problem is that almost all of those cards that I've just mentioned are XP cards. Um, and so this is actually sort of a part of a very elaborate combo piece in order to be doing plus two, plus two attacks at level zero. Um, and that is just not that good. Like even in its current state, it's fun. Um, and I really respect the, the place that it has in the plus engine. Um, but I don't think I can put it above C. I think that C is a pretty fair place for it, though. I think that this... I, I think I feel good about saying that this is about as strong as the 45 automatic, given that the rest of its card pool exists. <laughs> Alright, I've been talking for an hour 15. I can feel it. Um, uh, we're gonna keep going, though. No, I'm gonna get, I'm gonna get some water. I'm gonna get some water. I'm gonna be right back. Um... Everybody, um, be cool while I'm gone. darlings. Thank you for your patience. 
Um, let's talk about Garot Wire, um, which is absolutely one of my favorite cards in the game. I'm, I'm, I'm so excited to talk about Garot Wire, um, even if I don't yet know what I'm going to say about it. Um, I take this in, in Leo all the time. Um, it's, it's so weird because it's, like, one of the only weapons... Is this... Is this the only weapon that takes up a slot but not a hand slot? Like there's other there's other weapons that like the gr like the grenades don't take up any slots, um, and there's a couple of cards that take up arcane slots. But yeah, this is the only accessory slot. And it's the only one that takes up um, uh, a slot but not a hand slot. Um, <laughs> Uh, but it's but it's a weapon. It's a weapon, and it's not illicit because it's a piano wire, and it's not illegal to use piano wires. Um, I think raw wire is so much fun. Getting to like whip off a, um, a a a one health enemy, you know, an acolyte or a um, uh, a whippoorwill, or more often than those things, um, just an odd health enemy. Right. This is it. It synergizes with your with your switchblade or with your mauser or with uh, your 23 whatever it is that you're using to kill things with most of the time is going to be a two damage um attack and this really smooths the edges off of that um and obviously you can like fail this attack but i find that you know a plus two fight for free um is uh, it gets a lot done and i find that like the, the the main problem here right um is that your accessory slot is really really valuable in rogue you are probably holding on to um uh, at least one lucky cigarette case in rogue um so this really does suffer from the relic hunter tax where you do need to be like this costs five xp basically is what's happening here if you're drawing through your whole deck which you're a rogue you should be um you should you should see your whole deck um so if I evaluate this as a 5 XP card, is it worth it? Yes, it's still worth it. It's still worth it to have it. It's probably not S tier, given that it is functionally 5 XP. Um, but it is still absolutely worth taking. It's still a sick-ass card. Um, it does a lot of work. I find that it's, it's functionally an extra damage basically every single turn. Um, and I think that that's, that's, that's pretty good. I feel like I can't justifiably put it higher than B. <laughs> yep, it's going in B. Is it? Is it going in B? Can't I put it in A? No, I'm putting it in B. I'm putting it in B. I'm putting it in B because it's really expensive. The The slot is very competitive. Um, but I do love it. I do love Garot Wire. Um, I love to choke a man with a piano wire. Oh. Mamma mia. I don't know why I said that. Sawed-off shotgun. Um, this is one of my favorite little design things in the game is the difference between the shotgun and the sawed-off shotgun. Um, uh, there's like three like different elements to be considering here, right? There's like the mechanical thing that the card does and um, it's like it's like three, so three relationships. Um, you've got the relationship between the mechanical thing that the card does and the like the mechanical identity of the class, um, the mechanical identity of what the card does, and the um, flavor identity of the card, and you have the flavor identity of the card and the mechanical identity of the class. And all three of those things like work together so well in the, in the difference between Guardian Shotgun and Rogue Shotgun, right? Like, 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 okay, um, like, in, in Guardian Shotgun, you have a card that, um, like, okay, okay. In Rogue Shotgun, you don't have a combat boost because the rogues wouldn't get a combat boost because they need to, um, supply the boost themselves as part of their class identity. Um, but also, um, rogues, uh, the rogue shotgun doesn't get a combat boost because it is a sawed off shotgun. And so mechanically it doesn't make sense for it to have a combat boost, but also the sawed off shotgun doesn't have, um, uh, uh, a, a, a combat or like a higher value in a, and no combat boost, um, because, um, 
fuck, I don't remember what I was about. To, but, like, you see how all three of these things... Oh, yeah, also because, like, that's that's the thing that rogues do, right? Is that rogues um, want to have a higher threshold of success, but also a higher threshold of failure. Um, uh, and and all of these things, like, work together so well in, like, showing you the difference between these two cards. I, I love it. I love the, the shotgun, sawed-off shotgun transition. When they printed this card, I was I was overwhelmed. I was delighted. I was reading it off in, like, a... Like a like, I remember where I was. I was in the drive-thru. I was, like, sitting in my friend's car in the drive-thru, and I read this card, and I was, like, hooting and hollering because I loved it so much. Um, I never play it, though. <laughs> I never play this card, and I always want to in, like, Winnie and, like, maybe Tony because, like, it, it, it's another card that wants so much support. I talked earlier about how the shotgun regular um, sort of had, like, no boost to its combat because... Um, you really, really need to put so much into it to get anything out of it. And the same is true for the sawed-off shotgun and for, um, like, for, for some of the rogues, that kind of works, right? Like, it's printed in Winifred, and her whole thing as an investigator is that she's great at giving support to tests. Um, which makes this a pretty good card for her if she can refill it, um, which she can, I, I do think that Winifred is the place for this. There's just so much else that I like better in her. Sawed Off Shotgun really struggles, I think. It has such a high ceiling, and I don't want to discount the enormity of the ceiling that it has. It just needs so much help to get there. Um, I am going to put it in C, and I think that's fair. Um, this one, I don't expect anybody in the comments to be correcting me on it, but I do want to hear people in the comments tell me your Sawed Off Shotgun stories, because it's such a card that generates stories, and I do want to hear about it. Um, Sea Change Harpoon! Um, yeah, uh, uh, um, Fuck, I don't play Silas. I don't like Silas. I talked about this in the investigator tier list. Um, <laughs> Jaden says best card art. <laughs> um, I believe you. <laughs> um, yeah, I think really I should do a tier list at some point of like Arkham card art um, uh, tier ranked by how attracted to them I am. Um, <laughs> and obviously, personally, I wouldn't give this one very high. Um, uh, but, uh, you know, I, I'm an, I'm an ally. <laughs> um, I'm, 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 I, I support people who, who like men. Um, I'm not, I'm not giving it bonus points for that, though. <laughs> um, I never play Silas. This is good for Silas. It looks really good for Silas. It's like an action and three dollars to effectively be able to pull back your unrelentings that you were already going to pull back. Anyway, I don't know. Silas can already do this, right? Is this valuable? I think so. Fuck. This is, of every card that I've looked at so far today, this is the one that I'm the least confident on. Um, so, yeah. Um, let me know that I'm wrong about this one. Not if I'm wrong. Let me know that I'm wrong. Let me know what direction I'm wrong about this one. Um, my, my sense is that, like, this is sort of very expensive for the thing that it does. Um... I, uh, yeah. I don't know that Silas is, is making money hand over fist. He's drawing cards hand over fist. I don't know that he's making money hand over fist, and I'm not sure that Survivor really gives him a way to be turning cards hand over fist into money hand over fist. Um, so I think it is a repeatable plus one plus one. If you're committing a skill, which you are every time, it's a repeatable plus one plus one. I'll put it in B. Um, just for that. I think the effect looks like it's maybe not that worth it. Um, but I don't know anything. I don't play Silas. I don't play Silas. I've played Silas one time in my life. I played him for one campaign ever. Don't, don't look at me. Don't look at me. I know he's good. It's nothing against him. I don't have a, I just, I don't, I, he's not my, he's not my, he's not my scene. He's not my game loop. That's fine. Um, Blessed Blade is obviously bad. Um, uh, like, we like it as, it's not really a weapon, it's a way of generating curses, right? It's a way of adding one bless to the bag, or curses, generating blesses. It's, an, it's a way of adding one bless to the bag every round, um, which is not a very high rate of blesses in Guardian. Like, I don't know, who, like, who's doing blesses in Guardian 
like it's like it's Zoe in parallel, Zoe and Mary and like a couple of other people can do it. But you've got ancestral token. Um, all those investigators I just named have some like inherent blessed generation. I don't know one bless per round, drip generated, and very conditional plus damage. It's not good. I'm putting it in D. Um, uh, but you know what's much much better than blessed blade is blessed blade. Um, uh, there's not a real subtitle on that. Sorry, this is not, not all the images that are up on Arkham TV yet as of the time I'm doing the stream. So I'm having to like download some from other locations. Um, it doesn't actually have a subtitle there. Um, so for four XP, what are you paying for? You're paying for plus one combat to every attack. You're playing for plus one damage for every single attack. Um, and you are paying for, um, adding an additional bless token every round. So one additional bless token every round is probably not worth four XP, although, um, it is respectable, but plus one, plus one for every single attack is definitely worth four XP. Um, uh, this card rules, um, uh, like as, as having a, a, a bless card, like a bless weapon payoff alternative to Holy Spear, I think it really, really fits the assignment, um, this card is great. I honestly am going to put it in A tier. I think this is an A tier card. Infinite plus two plus one. And some infinite bless generation on the side. That's for three dollars in one one hand slot. That's great. That's great. I'm not putting it in S tier. I don't, I don't, yeah. Um, but it's great. And it is extremely good in parallel Zoe. It is extremely good in parallel Zoe. Um, they, they, they put her out. Um, they like, they like printed her and like everybody in the world, um, like including me, like everybody was like, oh man, it's such a bummer that her backside parallel can't take Holy Spear. Like it's such a, it's such a weird, bad design thing, like that there's no good weapon payoff for her. In Bless, if you use the backside, you basically have to use like parallel front um, original back, which is like fine and totally works. Um, and then like a couple of months later, it's like, oh, that's why, <laughs> because she does have a payoff. You don't need the Holy Spear anymore. Uh. Um, 25 automatic. Um, yeah, this card is also fast. It is expensive, but plus two plus one is good. Um, it's, I just have not that much to say about this card. It's better than the, the 45 automatic. Cool. Um, good talk. The thing you get out of the upgrade, though, is you get to fire it for free when you evade. You can fire it either at the enemy you've just evaded or at a different enemy at your location. It doesn't matter. I find that usually I'm firing it at the enemy that I just evaded, but you you need not. You can keep one around for farming if you like and just go shooting at something else. Um, it's, you know, if you're willing to spread the, your, your bullets out over however many turns you have bullets over four turns or however many more, um, then this is four extra actions. And that's really good. That is worth two XP for me. I think that this card is wonderful. I give it an A. Sword Cane, I will also give an A. Um, Sword Cane is wonderful, obviously. Uh, you know, you're a mystic and you get to fight using your willpower. And I think that that's wonderful. Um, and obviously it's really good in Dexter. Um, this is sort of like the staple of mystic hand slots for like a, for like a while, like a couple of years. And I think that like it, it started to be pushed out. They've given mystics a lot of hand slot stuff in the last few years since this came out. Cause like when this came out, there was very, very little competition for mystic hand slot. Um, and now ritual candles are a lot better and you've got like all of the, the blur stuff really requires a lot. Like living myths is a hand slot and, and, um, uh, your, your key of Solomon is a hand slot and all of these things. Um, so Sword Cane is not without its hand slot competition anymore, um, but it is still um, uh, quite powerful as a, um, a combat tool in a class that doesn't get a lot of it. Do I feel good about it being? Do I actually want it down in B? There's like no, there's like no acceleration there if you're not playing Dexter. There's emotionally an evasion tool. I'm putting this down to B, I'm sorry. Sorry, Sword Cane. 
Um, it is still really good. It's just not necessarily the best weapon, right? It's, it's, I find it's better as an evader than as an attacker. Um, holy spear, holy spear. Um, speaking of bless weapons, infinite plus two plus one, um, similar to the blessed blade, um, but also you get to occasionally splash for a plus four plus two. Um, it takes up two hand slots and it doesn't generate blessed tokens. In fact, it sort of consumes them. You need to like have an active economy of taking them in and pulling them out um, for this to work. Um, but still being able to do a plus two plus one whenever and a plus four plus three on occasion um, is a big deal. This one is definitely A tier, even for 5 XP. It's worth it. It's worth the 5 XP. Trusty Bullwhip. Um, yeah, so... Uh, that's an A tier for me. That's an A tier for me. Uh, you know, it's, it's not much combat acceleration... It's a little combat acceleration, um, but what it does is it lets somebody who can't fight at all fight. Um, like, suddenly Monterey is, like, like this one combat guy is running around and doing two damage to enemies per turn, and sometimes more than that. I've, I've like, turned Monterey into a real fighter using this card. Um, so, like, yeah, it's definitely not the one that you want as your primary weapon, but as far as, like... Well, like side weapons go sort of can't be beat um uh, oh your clover can fight now cool great um and then we have the advanced version um which lets you it both gives you a uh, a skill oh and also it's fast like let's not discount that it's fast that's a huge deal as well um this gives you plus two skill value makes it one cheaper and um uh if you succeed you evade and deal plus one damage instead of either which is a lot of things to give this weapon in exchange for the weakness being fucking gnarly but the problem is that i find that as mantra you shuffle your whole deck so fast that the upgrade and the weakness is actually a really really big deal um so i might actually like this is still really good but i might put this lower just because like the opportunity cost like of of getting the worst version of the weakness is, is rough it's rough um it's rough man um and given that this comes with i gotta put this down in b um okay butterfly swords i think this is either one where i'm gonna reconsider my position upon reading it or i'm gonna be controversial about it because my instinct is that i value butterfly swords more highly than most people do so let me let me forget what this card does. Let me read it with fresh eyes. Let me just... Okay. Two resources, or two XP, three resources, two hands, as an action fight, plus one combat. Afterwards, you may exhaust it to fight again, adding your agility to the skill value, and that attack deals plus one damage. So it's an infinite plus one plus zero. Um but also once per turn, um, you get a free plus X plus one. That's not bad. Yeah, that's like, that like, gives you some extra splash value. Um, it's like one, one, one three damage attack per turn. You know, you have to pull more tokens for it. Um, it's probably not worth two XP. Like, like that's pretty respectable as a, like that's really good for a level zero. It's pretty respectable for level one. It's probably not that good for level two. I'll be fair and put it in C. Um, but, you know, if you already got some XP, I don't think this is bad. What about the level five one? You get, um, an additional plus one combat to the attack you get to fight again every time um not just by exhausting and then if both of them are successful you can exhaust it to have the second one deal plus one damage that's really good i think that's really good um i'm putting that in b worth more than worth the three xp butterfly swords approved by amber autumn Dragon pull. Oh boy. Um, does anybody but Lily want this? 
you're a mystic. Do you want this? Does anybody but Lily want this? This is just for Lily. It's good in Lily. Does anybody else want this? I'm putting this in C. It's a mystic card. It's really a problem. It's, it's a mystic card that's using combat to fight. Sorry. Old Shotgun is so weird. Um, and I've never run it in a way that felt good and satisfying. Um, I have no idea what to do with this card. <laughs> it requires so much support to work. Because it's an old shock, like it's like it's cute flavor. It's cute. It's cute. I don't know. There's 97 cards. There's gonna be a couple. I don't know what to do with it. I don't know what to do with this one. It seems like a C to me. It doesn't seem that good. It seems slightly below curve. Not bad. You know, there's there's ways to make it work, but it, it seems like. The ceiling is pretty low for the amount of work it wants you to put in for it. That's cute. Wanting to, uh, Jaden says he wants to play with Yorick, which I think is, like, it's cute because, you know, if you, you act of desperation, you kill an enemy, you get to play the shotgun from your discard pile because it's, um, you're still in the middle of an event, and so... Its value is currently two, so it comes out with, with, with two on it. Um, you just have to be consistently killing things with events, which is not necessarily Yorick's forte. Um, but that is a fun build um, that, again, I think requires some, some work. It's not, it doesn't seem like a bad card, but I, th I think C feels fair to me. Um, Cyclopean Hammer. Great. We got that out of the way. <laughs> I think that's probably the only card that's living there. I don't play Cyclopean Hammer anymore. It's not fun. Um, great. Uh, glad we talked. It's it's super powerful. Um, it's in either Mystic or Guardian. You know, you're you're doing combat plus willpower, and in either one of those groups, that's going to be a huge number. Um, it's an infinite plus that plus one, and um, you get an additional plus one. Uh, like I, the, I forget the exact words in the taboo, but um, you can you can you can get further. You can get further damage, and also, um, you know, you're bonking people away, and that has huge utility as well, right? Is you solve a lot of a lot of problems that way. Um, yeah, I think most people don't play Cyclopean Hammer anymore because it, it's not, it's boring. Um, the Sledge. The Sledge. Um, we were talking about survivor weapons. Wow, this is um, uh, worth considering at level zero for a, a go-to survivor weapon if your combat is already really powerful. If you have a decent combat score, you know, Hank could maybe think about a Sledgehammer. Hemlock Veil vale really wants you to play the Sledgehammer, huh? Um, you know... It's, it's a fun design. Um, I think that rarely am I taking this in Guardian just because I think Guardian has better options at level zero. Um, sometimes I'm taking this in Survivor because Survivor doesn't have better options at level zero. Um, I think that I feel... It's B. I want to put it in C, but I'm going to put it in B. Because level zero, it's level zero, the cost is very low. Level four, on the other hand, you can do better by the time you get to level four. Why are you spending your entire turn doing a single attack? You can do more than six points of damage. I believe in you. You're, you're a guardian, you have a level four weapon, you can do more than six points of damage. Come on. Come on. This goes down in C for me. I think that... I think this is not worth the four XP that you're spending on it. Um, and this is one where I know that I'm that I know it generates stories. I I've said so many times, please give me your stories. I just like, 
like it's such a huge game and i've played a, i've played thousands of hours of this game i've played so much of it um most of it though by myself right i know there's like this huge community of people who play that i don't have necessarily full access to um and so i um i I'm like I'm like eager to hear all of the all of the the perspectives that I've missed out on and all of the like cool things that this game does that I don't see. Um, uh, so you know, Sledgehammer is a very funny card, and I I, I do want to I do want to know what funny things it's done for you. Enchanted bow. Attack using anything not named intellect plus one. And plus one damage, and you can shoot at things at the next location, which is very fun, and it's a lot of slot pressure. Um, two hands and an arcane slot is a lot on just about anybody. Um, obviously, you know, Rita really likes it, um, and, uh, you know, obviously, like we've talked about, hand slot pressure has gotten higher on Mystics, which makes this a harder sell for them. But the sniping effect is really powerful. So if you if you are a primary fighter for this, mm -hmm. um, yeah, the the exhaust is tricky. It's tricky that you can only do it once per turn. Um, you can do it an infinite number of times. You just can only shoot away from yourself three times. But also, you know, how long do you want to keep this in play for? Because you have other things you are going to want to put in those slots eventually, you know? Unless you don't, right? Unless this is like you're an off fighter and this is supposed to be your main fighting spell and you don't, just don't have anything you really want in your hands as much. I could see that. Um, it definitely has its niche. Um... And the effect is really, really cool. I think it's fair to put this in B. It's not, like, it's occasionally going to wow you. It is. It is occasionally going to wow you. Um, it's not going to consistently wow you. Um, this is not the cult coming back again. Um, this is Cookie's Custom 32. Um, that's right. We're talking about the story cards from the campaigns. Um, let's talk about Edge of the Earth. Um, this... I, I mentioned we were going to see it come back again. This is, does this look familiar? Because to me, this just looks like Finn's gun again. <laughs> it's Finn's gun again. It's fast and it costs $2 and it has two ammo on it. And you spend an ammo um, to fight with a plus two boost for plus one damage. It's very similar to Finn's gun. Um, and I'm probably going to put it in the same place as I put Finn's gun. Where did I put Finn's gun? I put it in C? Yeah. Um, I guess... Uh, the, 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 what, what, what's the opportunity cost on this? You're either, like, it depends on who's alive and who's dead in the expedition team, really, right? Um, I, like, I would rather have Cookie alive because Cookie gives you experience points. And I like experience points. Um, I... But, you know, you don't necessarily get to control that. If Cookie dies, Cookie dies. And, you know, sometimes uh, you, 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 you do your best to save him and it doesn't work. Or sometimes uh, just a, a random event happens to kill him. And so he's dead, he's dead. Um, there's, that's not the opportunity cost. The opportunity cost is whatever else you would be getting out of the survivors. And I think it is better than most of the other equipment from them. Is it better than whatever else you would be drawing out of your deck, though? Like, probably not. I think it's fair to put this in C. Um... It's not bad, and I often would take it if it's, like, helpful. Um, if it, like, like, if I have the spare hand slot. Um, but I'm, I, I think I'm very rarely going to be like, oh, fuck yeah, Cookie died, I can get his custom 32 in the way that I am if I'm like, oh, fuck yeah, Takata died, I can get her, I can get her cash. Um... <laughs> I, I like, I really like Takata's cash. <laughs> You can put it on your, you can put it on your, uh, your stick to the plan. You can have talking as cash on your... Runic Axe! I know that this is one that people want to put in S. People really want to put this card in S. And let me tell you why I am hesitant to put this card in S. Um, because I understand that Runic Axe can be very, very powerful. 
I understand that it can, like, run you all across the map and kill a bunch of enemies and pick up a billion clues, and I get its ceiling is very high. I understand that. However, comma, um, I, I mentioned this in my investigator tier list video. Um, the way that I tend to play the game is very draw heavy. Um, I like to play characters who draw a lot of cards, and when I play characters who don't draw a lot of cards, I like to make them draw a lot of cards. Um, I think that if I ever finish a scenario and I haven't seen the bottom of my deck, if I haven't reshuffled at least once, um, in any character, for any reason, I'm like, what did I do that my deck's totally stalled out? I didn't succeed that very well, which like does happen. Sometimes I'm like, oh, I didn't succeed there, my deck stalled out. Um, but I am always aiming to, to churn at least once and with some investigators more than once, but guardians, you know, I've mentioned they're more anemic on card draw. They have a harder time. Where am I going with this? What, what does this have to do with anything? What this means is that when I'm doing my upgrades, my like key asset upgrades, um, I don't tend to buy multiple of them. I'm not likely to be buying two Holy Spears. I'm not likely to be buying, well, I guess I could buy two Blessed Blades because it's like, that's additional entrance, but I'm not likely to have, um, like, two of, uh, like, my Garot wires, right? Um, my, 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 two of my Peter Sylvester's. Um, and I'm more likely to be spending that XP on, um, prepared for the worst, on, you know, stand togethers to be drawing towards my Holy Spear, um, because my second Holy Spear is redundant. I don't need it. Um, I've drawn it and it's a dead draw, and not only that, but it is a dead draw that has cost me five experience points. Runic Axe is a customizable card, um, which means that in order to get an upgrade, you need to spend uh, one XP checking one box, and you can pour up to 10 XP into checking 10 boxes. And those boxes are balanced in the, the the game design balance, assuming that you are going to have two runic axes in your deck. And I am not going to have two big powerful runic axes in my deck. I'm going to want to have one of them unless I have a bandolier level two in which I have two runic axes sitting. But runic axe basically is a long way of saying because it's customizable, it is very XP intensive for the payoffs that you get out of it. The effects are very, very powerful, but they are also so, so expensive. Um, to say nothing of like the, the, the raw resource cost of four. Um, and at level zero, I have found Runic Axe to be cromulent. It is, it is, I, I run out of ammo reasonably often, um, but I also, you know, I, 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 I get a reasonable amount of use out of it. Um, it's, it's an efficient, effective weapon, more or less. Um, but the, the XP costs a lot. Um, so I don't feel comfortable putting it in A. I don't. I'm sorry. Um, I understand that the value can be very, very high out of it, but I don't think I can put it above a B. I think B is a pretty fair place for me to put it across the breadth of its, its, its experience. Um, uh, I'm sorry. Um, Ceremonial Sickle is an F tier weapon. <laughs> It's F tier, even for even for mystics. Come on, what happened here, man? What happened with this suite of cards? I'm so curious about what happened behind the scenes with all of the Doom cards and Amina. What happened to her? And like, the level four one is like even more. Like, what what do you even get out of this upgrade? You get a you get a combat icon. You get plus two skill value to the attack. And you remove all doom from it. If, if, if the attack defeats an enemy. For four XP? What are you talking about? That goes below F tier. That's, that goes in the, that goes, that goes in the grave digger shovel, graveyard shovel level two tier. That's the insulting tier. What are you talking about? What do you mean that's all, what do you mean that's 4 XP? Hyperphysical Shock Caster is fun and I'm never gonna use it. Um, it's not actually that good. It's D tier um, for a lot of the same reasons. Well, it, the same reasons don't apply for, um, for Runic Axe because this one has ammo, right? And so this one, 
it's not redundant to draw the second one because you're going to run out of ammo on the first one. Um, so it's not... It, 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 is, it is still expensive, but it doesn't have the same expense multiplication problem. Um, uh, but it's not good. You can be doing better things with this. You can, do, you can be doing better things with this. You can make it your seeker gun, I guess. Um, it has it has a niche. It's not completely useless, but I'm not impressed by it. Um, but I like it. I think it's fun. Katana. Katana, katana, katana. Infinite plus two plus zeros. Um, and the occasional possible uh, a plus two damage on that hit. And once per turn, you get an additional... Um, uh, agility fight. That's so weird. For two hands, I wonder who our guardian is going to be next cycle. I really do. Because it's not good yet, obviously, right? It's not good on skins. It's not good on Lily. This is a pro this is obviously a promise card for next cycle. Um, like, <laughs> this is like, oh, this is printed for Wilson. This is, this is for next cycle. We don't know how this is yet because we don't know who it's for. Um, right now, this is a D card, but obviously, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll watch this video in a year and, and, and I'll be right. We'll watch this video in a year and everyone will be like, oh my God, Amber Autumn, you predicted this extremely obvious thing that it was obviously going to be for the Guardian in the next cycle. Um, oh, the Eyes of Volusia. So Blade of Yoth is a, is a bonded card for Eyes of Volusia. I haven't played this one yet. Um, you know, there's, there's a few in here I haven't played and this is one of them. Um, and my impression of it so far is that for the 4 XP that you have to spend on the card that brings it into play, it is really, really slow. Um, like, it effectively does the thing that it is trying to do very, very slowly. Um, like, it's basically one action per damage. There's no damage acceleration in this pair of cards. It's, it's, it's like just... Like it's just com it's just skill value. It's just skill value boosting. That's not very good. I'm not impressed with that for four XP. I don't like that. D. We're getting towards the end. We're getting there. We're almost there, gang. British Bulldog. Um, I think that the parlay clause on this is like almost entirely incidental. Um, I did this thing when I played when I played Alessandra. Um, because these cards haven't been out for that long at time of recording, and so I haven't played that much of them, but I did do a run with Alessandra, and I took the British Bulldogs in them, and my experience with it um, is that I, as Alessandra, I put on fine clothes, and then I never failed a parlay test again for the rest of the scenario. Um, it just didn't happen, right? I would, um, like, I would be playing vamp level threes, and I would be testing tests I didn't need, right? I'd be making willpower tests on enemies that don't have doom on them, just, like, fishing for the auto-fail so that I could free play out the British Bulldog, and it just wouldn't happen. So, like, I imagine occasionally it'll trigger, but the main thing about this gun is that it's the agility gun, right? We've been, um, sort of, uh, wondering about the agility gun forever. It seemed, it seemed inevitable, and here it is, the, the gun that uses agility in Rogue, um, and yeah, $3, three ammo, three agility, plus one. That's really good. Honestly, it's maybe too good. <laughs> There's no stat boost on it, admittedly. Um, so it kind of loses that over 45 automatic. But like for a level zero option, it really does fuck. Like, is this B or is this A? No, it's B. It's only three bullets. I'm not gonna go crazy here. Um, it's B. It's a very, very good card. This does a lot. Ah! Oh my god, I'm so sorry. Gotta go back through them all. Oh no. Wow, look how far we've come. Jesus, look how far we've come. Oh lord, look how far we've come. Okay, <laughs> British Bulldog 2! Um, yeah, this upgrade gives you um, plus 2 skill value, and you get to ignore the aloof keyword. It is occasionally... I do find that ignoring the aloof keyword is nice. Um, I did get some use out of that when I when I played it. Um, you know, it, it, 
it counters Kohaku's signature, right? You can you can counter um, uh, Tony's signature with it. This is actually wonderful for Tony. Um, although Tony doesn't want to use agility, so. <coughs> But if you've got another rogue fighter on your team with Tony, who's, you know, an agility focused, you know, kill a whippoorwill. Uh, uh, there's, there's agility. There's, there's aloof enemies around. It happens. Um, uh, I, I do find that the aloof keyword ignoring is relevant and the skill value is obviously also relevant. Um, it, it's, it's a marginal upgrade. Um, it'll stay in D. Um, Wicked of Thame uh, is uh, not that good as a weapon. Down here in F. As a weapon, it's not that good. Pitchfork. Pitchfork is fun. It's fun. It sort of is in the same boat as the um, Enchanted Blade. Or non Enchanted Blade. Enchanted Blade? What am I? The, um, uh, the, the bow. The ancient the uh, the not the the other bow you know the what you know which one i'm talking about why am i ornate bow thank you me <laughs> um god i've been streaming for two hours okay um it's sort of doing the same thing as the ornate bow right where it's doing one and a half damage per action um which is uh, like respectable plus one combat Plus one combat, one and a half damage per two hands. It's not as good as the machete. It's not bad. Um, put in B. Put in B. Put in B. Hatchet seems bad, though. <laughs> Hatchet seems bad. You can't kill an enemy with it. Um, and... Uh, like you get two damage like you swing it for two eight damage at an enemy that has more than two health and then you have to ha use whatever weapon is in your other hand it's a bummer that this takes a hand slot right like it it's kind of a greedy weapon and you've spent an xp on it i don't like this this seems mediocre to me i'm not impressed with the hatchet it goes in d I like, I'm like so bitter about all of the survivor stuff in this expansion too. Like I just, Hank, I'm really mad about Hank. I don't like him. I'm mad about how he turned out. Um, I, the, the elder sign thing infuriates me. The day that they fix Hank's elder sign, I will reconsider him. I will reconsider all of the cards in the set. I swear to God. Um, but I'm so mad about them. Um, boxing gloves are interesting, right? Because they take up so much space in your deck. Is the thing about boxing gloves, right? They're 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 they're, they're Nathaniel's second signature, obviously, and you can play them in somebody who isn't Nathaniel, who isn't like specifically trying to do the the, Nathan the Nathaniel thing, right? I know there are, there are boxing gloves, um, uh, ash can decks out there, for example. Um, but in order for them to really work, um, you need to be really relying on a lot of spirit combat events, um, and because you know they only trigger if you defeat an enemy. And they take up two hand slots. So in order to defeat the enemy, you need to be using probably your spirit events for that. You need to be using events to defeat the enemy, which means you're using spirit events for it. So boxing gloves, if you're doing a boxing gloves deck, like that's your whole deck. That's that's the archetype. You are doing a boxing gloves deck, right? Um, and like who really wants to be doing that outside of Nathaniel? Like I imagine you could be doing a boxing gloves Zoe deck or a God, I don't know, a boxing gloves Leo deck. You don't want to do that. Who is this for other than Nathaniel? Asking the same question I asked about the um about the dragon pull. Who else wants this? It's really good in Nathaniel, obviously. It's like it's tough because it's the thing that Nathaniel's built around. And Nathaniel is an A-tier investigator. So I don't wanna put this down in the low tier. Um, but I'm going to anyway. It's it's C tier in anyone who's not Nathaniel. And obviously, we make an exception for Nathaniel, who is good at it. Um, you know, his signature supports the boxing glove specifically. Um, his, 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 like, ability supports the boxing gloves. Um, uh, 
You could bandolier it with something else, but what's the point? Um, Boxing Gloves 3 is sort of the same thing. Um, I'm putting it down here in C in exactly the same place. Um, you know, if you want it, if that's the deck that you're doing, then it is totally worth the XP. Um, it just, it, it takes up your whole deck to be doing it. And I don't think the thing that it's doing is necessarily that good in anyone not named Nathaniel. Mauser! Oh my god, it took us so long to get to Mauser. Um, this is, this is the staple rogue level zero gun for me. This is the stable rogue level zero gun for me. This is going up into A tier in the same way that Enchanted Blade level zero is A tier for me. Um, uh, I use this all the time. It's a lot of ammo for the, for the money it costs. It only takes one hand slot, and yes, it exhausts sometimes, but you're a rogue, so like you can probably evade that enemy anyway. Um, and it pays you some money sometimes too. Like it, it's really really cheap for for five or for five ammo because you know it. It only costs four and it pays you back. Um, I It doesn't pay me more often than it does pay me. Like most times I find that it, it doesn't pay me. But um, I get a lot of use out of these things. I get a lot of use out of mouses. I include them in just about any any combat deck that can take them. Um, and you know, the upgrade, um, it gives you it gives you a little a little plus combat and if you it costs a little bit less and if you succeed by enough, you guys to do both. Um, I don't, you know, it's great in Winifred, which is the, the deck that it came from. Um, I, I imagine it's serviceable in some other places. I think that, um, I'm going to put this down and I'm going to put it, this one lower actually, because the XP that you spend on it, I don't think it necessarily, no, costs less, costs less. Keep it up here in A, keep it up here in A, keep it up. And then it's big cousin, the Beretta M1918, which is just like a grown up version of the same concept. Um, but now it takes two hands and you can do extra damage with it. And also um, plus four fucking combat. That's huge. That's great. Two hands is difficult. You're committing to it. If you're using the Beretta, you're committing to it. Um, I am going to put this one in B. Um, it's not like a staple in the way that The A is, like, the the 4 XP brings it down. Um, but, I like, it's it's solid. It's respectable. It's not a staple like the Mauser, but it's it's solid. Um, no, Mauser 2 has to be down in B. Mauser 2 has to be down in B. Um, it's not a staple. It's, not, it's good. It's not a staple. It's B. It's not as good as, like, the level 2 23 is or, or whatever. Eighteen Derringer, the Derringer is it's three dollars for two ammo, isn't it? Isn't it three dollars for two ammo? I mean three ammo if you fail, but why did you? Cause you're Stella. You don't even really get to like oops it until you put some XP into it. Like yeah, it's got some synergy, but at level zero, I'm so sorry, survivors. Like I'm so sorry. This this is this is a textbook C tier weapon. Um, the leveled up version is an improvement. You've swapped the cost and the ammo number now. You're paying one less for one more ammo. Um, the the extra ability on it is not that meaningful to me. To me, this is an extra two XP to make it like a like a serviceable gun in terms of your your cost to ammo ratio. Um, this goes up a full tier to me. This is this is easily worth the two XP. This this makes it go up a tier. Chainsaw, chainsaw, our very first level four survivor card. The first one, y'all remember that they printed this, and it was the first time we had ever had a level four survivor card. I was so ex I was I was I was like, because it had been such a long period of like survivors were level zero to three and um there was like a lot of discourse about that my strong stance my opinion was that it was good actually um i thought it was neat it gave the class a sense of identity um i think that i feel a little bit differently now but i definitely was like i hope they don't ever print a level four survivor card and then they printed this um and i was like shit it's really cool <laughs> fuck i like it actually i think it's a cool card 
Um, it's a little bit anachronistic. Chainsaws didn't quite exist yet at the time. Um, they're a little bit in the future. There's like early version. It's a little, they're skirting the edge. They're, they're kind of getting away with it on the technicality, but it, like, honestly, a rule of cool. I think it's, it's cool. It's cool to have survivors have a chainsaw and have it be a fuck off level four weapon. They never should print a level zero version of this card. It would be dumb. The chainsaw needs to be a level four card, just flavor wise. Is it good? Yeah. Um, three shots at plus two, plus two. Um, and if you fail, you get to, um, uh, you get to re replenish your supply and oops is more likely to be working at this point uh, when you, when you've got enough XP to be putting this in your deck. Um, uh, obviously, you know, we love to, we love to juggle these in Yorick. We love to be running these in Stella. Um, it's in a lot of other people, not as worth it. Um, supplies are harder to replenish. You can do it with, um, emergency cash level three. Um, but I think that's like just about it really. Um, maybe cleaning kit, but like that's just Yorick is the guy who can take both of those cards again. Um, so, you know, ultimately this is nine damage. I can't put it that high above old hunting rifle in most of the people who can take it. Um, But I can put it a little bit above old hunting rifle. Um, I think the fair place for this is B. Like obviously it's a big hitter. Um, it costs a lot of XP to get it there. It's a big hitter and you really need to be playing the right people to make it work. There's only like a couple of people who actually like this. Which I guess is true for most survivor weapons. I think B is a fair place. I think B is a fair place for this. And then we just have four um, uh, like standalone scenario reward cards left. Um, that was that was all of the all of the like mainline player card weapons that exist in the game. Um, Kopesh. Uh, uh, yeah, this card rules. <laughs> Infinite plus three plus ones. That's great. And some other, some like bonus movement stuff. Um, it's a lot of bonus movement actually. That's really powerful. Four resources, two hands, and you have to side with uh, whatever his name is, the, the X guy, you know, the guy with the name with the X. Um, high cost for it. It's hard to get. It's really powerful once you get it. Um, it's going in B again. Very powerful weapon. Very high cost to get. Um, Bloodstained Dagger. I don't like Bloodstained Dagger. It never ends up in the person I want it with, right? I always end up, like, I'm holding Bloodstained Dagger in, like, Daisy or some shit. Um, and, like, you do, you, like, figure out who it is. Like, you decide who's lead investigator based on who you want to have the bloodstained dagger, right? You, you, you tech for it. I get that at this point. Um, but, I don't know. Like, the, 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 the marginal card draw it gives you is just not that good relative to a lot of the rest of the stuff it does. Um, this is C tier. But, um, I do love the cursed question mark tag. I think that's very fun. I will give the weapon that. Mego weapon is very fun for me. Um, you know, you get it's it's all of the fun of Cyclopean Hammer, um, but without being quite as like busted, right? You get to you get to push things away from you, which is fun as hell. Um, but you only get to do it three times, and you don't get like infinite extra ammo out of it. Um, and it's difficult to get. You don't necessarily you're not guaranteed to get this. Um, and it, it's one hand slot. I think this card rules. Um, I do. I think that you get a lot of you get a lot of use out of it. Give it to Kate. Let Kate put a clue on it. It's science rated. Is this A? Is this B? Is this A or B? What do we think, gang?
It only has three ammo. We're giving it B. We're giving it B. It's only three ammo. Two for three ammo would be really good if this was a level zero card, but it's not. It's a story card. Um, I don't even know what this one does. <laughs> exhausted. Spend a resource. Place a resource on it from the token pool. So you exhausted to put one of your resources on it. Fight plus one combat for each resource on it. If you succeed, move up to three resources. To that much. Very expensive. Um, that's why it costs only one to put into play in the first place. Capable of some really, really big hits. If you can support it with the money, yeah, yeah, let's put this in B. And that's it. That's all of the weapons in Arkham Horror, the card game, um, as of as of time of recording. Um, they're all here. Um, and aren't they, aren't they gorgeous? Uh, thank you all for joining me. Um, that scrolled down slightly when I wasn't looking. Um, do that. Is that better? Yeah. Oh, that, no, it's cutting off the Fs. Um. Well. Um. Thank you all for joining me, um, on this, on this two-hour extravaganza. I think this is just, like, my brand now, is I'm making videos about Arkham Horror that are too long. <laughs> Um, yeah, I did this, um, mostly, I mean, obviously I said because I, you know, I needed to do something with the outfit, but I also, um, uh, you know, I did the, 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 the investigator tier list video and, um, it didn't get as many like views as a lot of my other videos, but it got a lot of response. Like I, there's a, there's a lot of comments on that video from people talking about it, engaging it, talking about opinions and, um, uh, telling me that they wanted to see more of my opinions, and, and I was like, wow, I have, like, um, like, a, like an audience, like, I'm a part of a community, wow, um, and so I decided to do this, I thought maybe it would be fun to do more of them, um, and, and so that's, that's what this is, um, so, you know, thank you for viewers like you for, for making this happen, um, uh, I guess that's you, you. You know now that your your input does in fact affect what I do. Um, so um, I don't know. Was this fun for folks? Obviously, um, uh, obviously I care. <laughs> Put a lot of time into it. Um, yeah, I I wanna before I before I sign off, I wanna drop a couple. Um, uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna do I'm gonna do a little bit of self promo before I go, just so you know, real quick. I have um I have a podcast. If you don't know, it's called Original Podcast. Do not steal. My friend Devin and I do it every week. Um, we make we talk we take a different um intellectual property franchise um something like that, and we make an original character in that franchise as a way of discussing what makes it interesting. Um, and I think that's it's a I think it's a good show and it's worth checking out. Um, I have a little um like horror based story card game that I can't super like talk about right now but I'm like I'm like working on it I'm very excited about it's like a little story game thing um so um I might try to put out like an interest form for that at some point if that if that's your thing um and uh yeah I guess I guess thank you so much for watching and um uh let me know um give me your thoughts give me your feelings I loved getting comments on the last one I love to respond to the comments on this one um and uh yeah guess I'm, I guess I'm signing off now. Thanks, Gorge.